one of the most amazing things uh, about the way we see the world is that despite the sort of kaleidoscope of images that are hitting our eyes, the world seems very stable, very sensible, we can understand things. So for example, when we see a car and that car drives away from us down the road, it doesn't shrink in size, even though clearly on our eyes it's shrinking all the time, and yet we see it as being the same size. That's called size constancy. And one of the questions we were interested in was how does the brain enable us to see objects at different distances as being the same size. One of the interesting things that uh, uh, prompted an understanding of size constancy was something called the after image. Uh, an after image uh, is uh, something that we've all experienced. Uh, you might be, for example, at a, at a wedding, a, a flash bulb will go off as someone's taking a picture, uh, and that uh, image of the flash bulb will stick with you because it excites the back of your eyes so thoroughly uh, that when you then look at another surface, like a wall, for example, you'll see a rather dark spot uh, where that flash bulb went off. So what the afterimage allows us to do is we can ask people who've got this afterimage uh, set up to look at surfaces at different distances from them while their brains are being scanned. And of course they'll see the object uh, or the afterimage rather that's projected on the far surface as being larger uh, than the afterimage projected on the near surface, even though on the eye exactly the same uh, spot of activation is there, the same size. And so that allows us to explore the brain and find out how the brain changes as our perception of the size of the afterimage changes. When visual signals from the eye reach the brain, uh, they enter what we call the cerebral cortex, uh, that part of the brain that looks a bit like a walnut. Uh, and at the back of the head is where the primary visual cortex is, where the visual information first comes in. And we know that there's a map of the retina uh, on that um, uh, visual cortex, a kind of map of the world out there. And so the question that we addressed was, is that map reflecting what's on the back of your eye, or is it reflecting what you really see out there in the world? And of course the answer we found using the afterimage was that it reflects the size of objects out there in the world, not exactly what's going on on your retina. It's important to understand vision and the brain because although we study all kinds of eye diseases and things of that kind, um, we also must recognize that when people have damage to their brain from a stroke and so on, it isn't just their speech that's affected or their ability to move their arms and legs, they also have fundamental problems in actually seeing the world or hearing the world. So as we gain an understanding of how the brain converts those uh, bits of information that arrive on the eye into meaningful images that we can understand, uh, the more we'll be able to diagnose people correctly, perhaps offer the right kind of uh, therapy and rehabilitation, and maybe even intervene uh, in making them better.